October 15th is the policy advisory committee. We'll start with attendance, go around the room saying who's here. Rob, we'll start with you. Sure. Rob is an audio assistant superintendent. Hey, Aaron Earl, a school committee chair. Jennifer Lima, school committee member. Uh, for the record, we do have quorum. Quorum is three, and three are here. Um, the first thing on the agenda, or second thing on the agenda, is citizens' comments. Pam Panero. I'm here today to speak about the policy. A committee meeting policy. I just want to reiterate my concerns from two school committee meetings ago. I have concerns about the late meeting starts, which have been at times from 20 to 40 minutes late. I suggested stronger language be included to make every effort meetings will start within 10 minutes of the advertised time. I also expressed concerns over the length of the meetings. I found the evidence presented by Mr. Sheehan to be compelling and a clear indication NK is an outlier and has room for improvement. I also am interested to hear discussion on rationale for the changes to the meeting minute details to better understand why um, there have been changes and how the minute details have happened. And lastly, on a different note, I just want to suggest you find a way to streamline the policy subcommittee meeting agendas to a more reasonable amount of policies to improve parental and community engagement. Some of these policies have been on the agenda for months and it is frustrating not knowing which ones you might speak about. I'm sure this can be a difficult process, but I do think it has room for improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, did everybody get a chance to review the minutes from the meeting on the 30th? Can I get a motion to approve? Second. So, is there any particular order that people want to go in this afternoon? No, you know, whatever. Okay. Rob, we totally uh, blew off attendance <laughs> accidentally last week. Do you want to okay. go through that? Okay. Sure. Um, so, I want to preface this by saying I, I did work on updating this. Um, I wasn't able to, to really dive into this with our admin team only because on Monday when I was scheduled to do so, we had a district mm -hmm. emergency okay. that we had to attend to. So I wasn't able to go over it with them, but we can talk about, um, you know, some of what, um, some, some updates that I made. I did look at some other policies um, from around the state. Um, we looked at, we looked at South Kingstown. We looked at Cherahoe, we looked at um, East Greenwich, and we looked at Cumberland, um, just to get a, a different flavor, if you will, of mm -hmm. like how they went about their attendance policies. Um, Sorry, Mr. one, Rob. SK, Cherahoe, Cumberland. And East Greenwich. Yes. Um, and so just to clarify, yeah. we're on clean red line attendance. Is that the most up-to-date doc in this folder? Yeah. Yes. Correct. I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right one. Thanks. So, I mean, I, I don't... I don't know if you want me to give like an overview first or if we want to just go through it or if you want me to highlight some of the changes because I know it is. Well, I, I actually thought that, I, I thought the last time we talked about this that you were actually going to bring us a true clean document. Oh, okay. Like to look at. So. This maybe, is progress though. Yeah. Um, we could clean it or we could. So it, it maybe that'll give you a chance to talk to an admin and then come back to us with an actual like. Not red line, not scratched out, like yeah. a policy to discuss. Yeah. Because I think that was the issue we'd kind of gone through. We'd crossed things out, we looked at it, and then right. we decided the best thing to do would be to just kind of take yeah. it fresh. And, and I, I got to apologize for that. I get sometimes with the number of policies we go through, it's like, which one? No so worries, no worries. I'll make a note to have this on our agenda for the next meeting and then um, bring up a clean red line, a clean okay. version after that. Is there anything, Rob, that you wanted, um, like, feedback or thoughts on before you bring it to admin? Like, um, when you were going through anything that you got stuck on or anything that, like, was it consistent with other districts or maybe unique to us? What I, what I wanted to do was to make the document just sort of flow logically. Um, 
you know, mm-hmm. so, so like, so, so, so it had like, it wasn't redundant at places. There was, there was time where we had like sort of redundancies where we had like, um, language that didn't necessarily pertain to a section. So I, I, I was trying to get it so it mm-hmm. flowed sort of one to the next. Um, I, I took some things from, from some other districts. One of the things that I did have a question about, which I guess we could, we could talk about is, um, there were some stipulations in other districts about language pertaining to students who were not attending school. So for example, students who were maybe enrolled as students at the beginning of the year, but were not attending for a considerable length of time at the beginning of the year. And there was language in, in one of the colleges in particular in Cumberland where it was like they had language around withdrawing the student for a particular amount of time if they haven't attended, if they follow certain steps. I wasn't sure if that was something we wanted to look at um, as potential language. So it'd be like one of those things where if, if there's a student who maybe is on our rules who shouldn't be, and, and, and we've made attempts to try to reach out to the student to attend school. Um, How does that work into like the chronic absenteeism like process as a whole? Like, or the, well, or the truancy officer? Yeah. Like I hear what you're saying, and it seems like something that should be documented. Like if it gets mm-hmm. to that point, I, yeah. I don't just, I think that is interesting. I just want to go see what's in. Yeah. How often does that happen? I don't think it happens very often, but I just, I, I, I think that, again, I just saw it in one of the other policies where um, it had language in there stipulating that if after a certain amount of time and after a certain number of steps have been taken, the student is still not, or the family is not responsive and the student is not attending school, that the student would be withdrawn. Um, I do, it, it does have an impact on chronic absenteeism potentially. Um, like, because removing them makes it look better. Correct. For lack, I mean, but yep. I, I guess my question was like, where does that student fall in the outreach process, right? I mean, like, wouldn't, they would be being outreached to up until the point that they were. Well, there's two different categories, pre-18 and post-18, too. Like. Yeah, I'm assuming this yeah. is a pre-18. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that could happen too. A eighteen-year-old could just ghost us, right. and yeah. that is a different process, truancy-wise, than yeah. Like I, in my mind, I'm more like like if if we're getting no response, right? Like that to me triggers like a alarm bell, right? That nobody's yeah. responding, and it just seems weird that we would just be like, okay, well, we're just gonna withdraw this too. Yeah. And so, I mean, it was, it's not something we certainly, we haven't, we haven't had it, um, so we, we don't have to have it, but it was one of those things that just sort of piqued my interest a little bit, because, um... It'd be something interesting to ask, um... Yeah, Rachel, Mr. Be cur- well, I was going to say Andrew, oh. um, as far as, like, what procedurally, like, happens, like, if you go to truancy court, or if you go, you know, like, like, where that lies, or if, like, you're confident a student went somewhere else, like, you know, like, you, you've heard through whatever that they're in Texas, yeah. but they are just not officially withdrawn. withdrawn from your system, like, you don't want to have students on your books that aren't really your students, no. and so mm-hmm. I do think that there's some merit to at least exploring it more to that, yeah. from I a couple different angles. To know from Cumberland, like, why they, like, oh, yeah, well, Rachel, yeah. Ra- Rachel, Rachel, you saying, Rachel, yeah. yeah. Um, right, so that's, I think it's worth pers- like looking into a little bit more because I do think that if even though it's rare, like if it is something we want to make sure that we're following processes so that we're not accidentally overstating our enrollment, but also mm-hmm. like yeah. And the o- the other thing I wanted to try to include here, which was um, just sort of clearly defining responsibilities both on the side of the school district and on the side of like the uh, family and the student. Um, just so there's some clarity there around what is expected from each side with regard to student attendance. Um, so, so I, I just want to create sections for that, just so there's, yeah. you know. But I mean, yeah, I can come back with this yeah, with looks, a clean version. Good. And um, like yeah. I'm looking through Rob, all the changes that you made, and I don't see anything. Like you know, like if you just rolled those two accepted mm-hmm. ones like I don't see anything that it just looks like reorganized and added to which is good mm-hmm. yep and then just see what the admins especially the building admins I'd be curious yep. about them especially like in the areas of like absences early dismissal procedures etc mm-hmm. um, one concern that I think we need to think about as a district is 
our use of paper. Mm -hmm. um, so like when we sign somebody out for early dismissal, we write it on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You know, like how quickly is that in the system? Thinking about things like safety and emergency protocols. You know, mm -hmm. like like just mm -hmm. I, I, in a world of technology, like mm -hmm. I feel like that's a little outdated. Like as far like. I've seen other schools have like iPads that you check your student yep. out on and, mm -hmm. and different things. So just maybe some consideration in those procedures. And if, if we can't change them now, maybe at least noting that they may need to be looked at from a systems perspective. Yeah. Would that be, you think more so, would that be to be in policy language or would that be more of a procedural? It's procedural, but like some of the stuff in this is about like automatic texts, emails, calls, yep. and how those get triggered and that sort of stuff. So they're, they're yep. friends, I guess, is how I would say it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Like so, when it says like shall be recorded and reported, like that's mm -hmm. just there's some stuff there that I think we need to think about. policy that we wanted to acknowledge that going to school is good but like also mm -hmm. acknowledge the fact that there are students mm -hmm. that have things mm -hmm. that, that might prevent them from yep. going yep. even if they really yep. did we get that worked in yet um so i know that we had we had worked in under the philosophy Yep. Hold on just a second. It's not there. Yeah. Maybe under the purpose? Yeah, I don't see it in the... I see the thing about like chronic absenteeism, but I don't see the thing about like mm -hmm. recognizing that there are sometimes circumstances that. Okay. I mean, what's a good sentence that we, we might want to add there? Do we want to add something after like, I'm thinking like maybe in the philosophy section, like after the, the red language there? Yeah, like something in, don't hold me to the exact verbiage, but maybe something along the lines of like, because under philosophy, like we acknowledge that for some students, mm -hmm. like absenteeism is not a choice, mm -hmm. and like the district is committed to working with those students to support their their academic like needs, kind of like that sort of vibe. Like, because yeah, this yeah. is very like excellent attendance and success go hand in hand, like that. Yep. Like I just think about a student that is chronically ill and how that would read to their family. So the district <laughs> recognizes that. Um, I think I wrote here. I think I wrote here. Yeah, we had wrote add something about issues that keep students from school okay, when they okay. want to be there, and they're not just you know skipping class. Okay, is that did, was that something at the bottom? No, it was right underneath where Aaron's typing right now. All right, sorry. It's okay. beyond the, their control. I keep thinking about yeah. the presentation from the truant officer. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But something like this. Just bring it in a second. Let's 
stuck in like edit delete. Mm -hmm. Where'd it go? Oh. Might unstrike something. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Again, but I need it not green, <laughs> not green, and not striped there. But like some, and it could be a little different than that, Rob. But like that mm -hmm. vibe, maybe of just like that, we understand that some students absenteeism, like might be essential for their well-being or could mm -hmm. arise out of their control. Like we're dedicated to supporting those students and providing like accommodations to help them thrive. Um, so why don't we leave this, have Rob work on it, and come back with it? Mm -hmm. It's on the bottom, Rob. Oh, it is. See it? Right underneath the next page. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just cut. No, 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 it's okay. I just cut and pasted it in. You can. I'm not wedded to any of that. I wrote it really fast. Okay. But so something with that. that for some way. students, absenteeism may be essential for their well-being and often arises from circumstances beyond their control. We are dedicated to supporting these students in their academic journey by providing necessary resources and accommodations to help them thrive. Is there any question of losing your mind? Yeah. Like something with that vibe. Yep. Like totally. just so, just so yep. that we're saying, because it's an and statement, right? Like for sure. yes, we all yep. agree that absenteeism has a negative impact, but. We, like, want to, we want yeah. to acknowledge the fact that there are certain realities that students confront that prevent them from attending school regularly, yeah, and that, and that we'll work with them. No yeah, just a little what. balance yep. there. I think it's helpful for families so they don't feel badly. I agree. Um, okay, so we'll, yep. next step is Rob turns all the red to, to black and then shows yep. the building right. admins to see if they think it's consistent, and then we probably can move this one along. I hope so, yeah. Good um, job, Rob. Okay, thank you. So the next one is attendance boundaries. And if you go into 10, 11, red line, we talked the last time about like taking all of those related policies and turning them into one. So what I did, but that admin would have to be the one like to kind of like clean it up sort of. So what I did was I took them all, I dropped them into this document. I cleared out like redundant um, purposes, policies, and things like that. And then. It's only three pages long? Yeah, there was a lot of like. Like paragraph long policies? Yeah, like, yeah, there was a lot of stuff. Or a lot of redundancy or whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. just want to make sure. I was, I was like looking for like a 10 page document. Yeah, and, and like stuff that like it I, said, like elementary school is like grade K through six, grade through five. like. Middle school is grade six through eight. Like, yeah. And I was like, I don't know if that actually needs to be like spelled out. Um, so. It needs to be spelled out somewhere, but probably not. But I don't know here. if it's here. Yeah. Because this is about like student assignment mm -hmm. to school. Um, so I put this all together and um, added like some of the things that we've talked about since more the reason why these policies are on the agenda, like kindergarten registration, voluntary and involuntary transfer, like timeline for these requests. Um, so I think the next step, you know, siblings being like kept in the same school where possible. So I think the next step would be to have um, admin review and see what is in here that should be in here, shouldn't be in here, and then we go from there. Let's, um, just so I understand the document. So at the top's obviously the, the parts that were keepable from that original policy. Mm -hmm. And then the policy directives piece that's in purple, what is that? This is what is currently, like that's left from one of the other policies okay. and I just highlighted as kind of a, hey, is this still like what the yep. directive is or should be? And then the bottom part, that then the next section is again like a cut and paste from one of the other attendance yeah. area policies. And then the yellow notes are random thoughts. Yes. That yeah. we've had over, yeah. like as we yeah. realized some gaps in the policies. Because before there was like a, this is how students are assigned to school. This is what happens when um, parents want them to go somewhere else and it was also this is what happens when the district wants them to go someplace else so we took all three of them and boiled them down to one so it just deals with assigning students to school period mm -hmm. and there wasn't anything documented around like the kindergarten process yeah the entry to the district right. and so it's not yep that makes sense 
do we want to also talk about the pre-K process in this one for registrations or like you know what I mean like that's another place where mm -hmm. students enter that I don't know if that's outlined anywhere else on, on how students get into our pre-k program and what that looks like because they do come in in a variety of ways and I don't think that that is documented in a policy anywhere so maybe something else to think about mm -hmm. did it did any of them address when students come in like not at the beginning of the school year no should it if we're talking about strictly how they are assigned to a yeah. school I don't think so because I think the process is still the same regardless yeah. of when you arrive yeah I think well I think yes and I think whatever that is it should we should just make sure that nothing is month specific like because if if that is like a mid, like say somebody is going through a process, a new kindergartner moves mm, to school, you know what I mean? Like, like what I, I agree with you, but like I just think we need to look at it through that lens too. A bit that not all students will be on the same timeline. I think but. the only thing is for kindergarten registration, but I think the way we have it like noted in here is yeah. that like this is the timeline, and then after that, first just maybe acknowledging, first, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I think to Rob's point about the other one too, like as we go through this one, like organizing it in a certain way that makes sense, like maybe like chronological, like like putting the kindergarten stuff at the beginning, then like if a family member, like if we need to be reassigned, if they need to be, like you know, like trying to chunk it in a way that it'll make sense for families when they're reading it, I think would be good. Because I think some of the other ones were not organized like that, and it was confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I do think in this policy to referencing um, the current um, um, NEA and K contract, because that 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 document aligns with this redistricting? Like, you know, like the class size pieces? It like, does mention it. Um, it talks about if the reassigned student's place becomes so large as to violate the class size agreement with the teacher's association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think making it really clear where people can find, like that, if I was not, if that's not clear, I think, to like what that means, like where you find that, like, you know, like, like to for most up-to-date, whatever, look for the, any A N K contract on okay. the school website. You know, like I don't think like I knew we're saying it, but yeah. I don't know if like for a family member that doesn't know how to navigate our systems, if they would understand where to go look for that. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I do think if we have any forms um, associated with these processes that they should be attached below so like the kindergarten registration form the pre-k application like anything like that yeah i think putting it on the bottom as um, appendixes to the document would be really helpful yeah i have listed form and process yes yeah. got it okay so i see that you we added a potential here under policy statement for for putting language in around the regular review of potential redistricting yeah I just put something in there about like is there some do we want to add that like you know it, I was thinking more like not like overall redistricting but more like you know I know we do it but like kind of like a regular review of like classroom caps every year mm. and, and like that type of thing like right now there's nothing I know it's done as a practice but mm -hmm. there's nothing that says you know what triggers that or like at what point it becomes something that it has to be done mm. or like an overall redistricting like if, if certain schools are at you know x amount of utilization and others are at y like um they, like i i know i saw i think it's chicago public schools obviously much bigger but they mm -hmm. actually have a policy on mm -hmm. redistricting like that covers that type of thing so now it's just kind of at the superintendent's discretion is that what yes okay. yeah 
mean, yeah. I mean, I know that it's a topic that gets brought up fairly often. Yeah. So it wouldn't be bad maybe to have some type, type of language um, guiding it, you know, about when redistricting mm -hmm. should be. I, I would imagine it's just like looking at school capacity. Yeah. You know? I think it's, um, I think we want to write it in a way that gives the administration autonomy. Like you don't want to like, you know, like to, to look at the situation and make recommendations based on what's best for students, but also gives transparency for community members and families to kind of know when that yeah. process might happen or how they could like request that process to be considered. You know, like, cause I think what we're experiencing right now is a good kind of, I don't like that there's like lures. And I know we're talking about it publicly, obviously now and, and at the school committee level with the, the committee that we're forming, but like, I don't want people to get overly nervous about redistricting maybe happening or like be unaware that that is a possibility. Like I feel like there's gotta be some middle of transparency as far as like, okay, if after two years of overages at a, mm -hmm. you know, like then we are starting, once we start seeing a pattern, then it's time right. to put this process into place and this is what that looks like. Because like you wanna give the, the administration that autonomy, but also like there's gotta be something I think in the middle to help guide that too so yeah. that they're not getting because it's not a comfortable process so you want to also help protect them in right. that as and, well and not just like in my mind not just like the big redistricting but more like you know like we've seen for the past three years there's been a kindergarten issue at hamilton right mm -hmm. and it's been a reactive process every year mm -hmm. like so is there some type of thing we can put in place where that's more proactive where we can be looking to see mm -hmm. you know you never know how many kindergartners, but you know what i mean just yeah. something like well, I'd be curious to know what is there any like past precedents here, like in terms of how this has been handled. It has not. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> everybody burst into Sorry, Pam, Pam, Jen, and I all collectively laughed, which is. Well, I mean, if there we don't have policy, well, so there's a couple we, things. We, so right. I think the reason that I think there's some chuckles is one, we have our with having transition in administration, you're going to have transition in process. So yeah. that's part of the problem. I think also we had some interesting situations with closing an elementary school, mm -hmm. um, with, with re-changing our philosophy about a building. So like Fishing Cove, for example, originally was opened as an all kindergarten, mm -hmm. then it evolved to a K-2, mm -hmm. then now it's a traditional elementary school, well then the pre-K through five is there. So I think we've had, in addition to just people moving into different places of town, we've also mm -hmm. then layered on some additional challenges at the elementary school level, mm -hmm. I would say, yeah. particularly. Um, the middle school over time, we've had some redistricting, but but not as extreme as the elementary school. I think it's school. more elementary. Yeah. 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 yeah if so you, if you like could avoid dropping a letter on a Friday before a school vacation week, that That's would be fun. progress. No doubt. <laughs> but I think to, to that is. point, like yeah. giving some guidance and some outline of like, you know, like once the process starts, a notification should go out, like for families being notified, making sure to, you know, like there's gotta be something. I think from yeah. a standpoint of like administratively, um, it would help to have some language. And it, and, and, it, and, and Aaron kind of re like referred to this, like having language where you had a little bit of guidance, but also some flexibility and autonomy with how we apply the guidance, you know? So like what would, what would interest me would be, okay, is there some type of language we can, I come up with to identify what would initiate a need to 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 start the conversation so right? i dropped in the folder for the attendance thing the policies and the cps attendance boundaries and it covers things like um you know annual review of boundaries factors to be considered that's a chicago one yeah and it, it's a pretty good you know obviously it's not going to be completely applicable but it, it kind of shows things like you're saying, like, mm -hmm. you know, where where to start when looking at that. Um, yeah, like, I like that they, like, this is kind of that thing of like, hey, like, if some of these things are happening, that triggers, yeah. like, Maybe a review, about, and right. when the review should happen, mm -hmm. which I think we're appropriately doing it, like, we started that conversation in August, like, I was like, we need to mm -hmm. start this conversation now, because we want to give families time to plan. And then I also think the cleaning up the kindergarten process hopefully will help that because I think one of the challenges for the administration is obviously we know students could register at any point, but like trying to help guide those conversations like in a more appropriate time frame, I think will also help yeah. because it'll allow the school committee and the administration to make bigger decisions much more in advance than yes. like in, 
a really reactive way, but I like that it talks about like the capacities, of course, but also like travel time and distance. Um, the program considerations, I think, is important because we do that one's a little different, but it makes me think of. Um, Where are we on now? I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm looking at the Chicago one that Jen dropped oh, in okay, CPS. Okay. Um, just like what they had have in theirs. Um, like thinking about items like specialty programs and where those go and what happens if schools are at capacity that have those programs. Like I think that's really important for the staff too to know and understand um, and what the timelines for that, especially for students and also for students that are in those programs, mm -hmm. like having an understanding of like, this is where it's hosted now, but like depending on X, Y, Z, like there is a possibility that those might need to move. I also think like, you know, it's good to have an understanding of like when we talk about redistricting, it there's 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 degrees to it, right? Like you you I hear redistricting and I think big large scale. I think like we're gonna look at this comprehensively, we're gonna look at this across the district. It's a it's a it's it's gonna involve a lot of people, there's gonna be a lot of different seats at the yeah. table and voices at the table and, and so on and so forth. Um, but it also sounds like there's like more of a micro uh, micro redistricting if you will well, yeah we like, like where, up with a word for it. where there's like there's more like just like concentrated Small issues weeks. that have to do with yeah. like certain grade levels of certain schools mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. you know exactly yeah. um so we should maybe distinguish that yeah because because yeah. i agree 100 yeah because yeah. yeah. in, in my mind they're two different things and like the big mm -hmm. scale redistricting probably doesn't happen often mm -hmm. hopefully does not happen often but there may be pockets of mm -hmm. having to do and i think we probably already are doing those smaller adjustments Right. Correct. Yeah, so I think it's it's documenting yeah, the documenting the, the 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 or having the policy state kind of what happens like what might need to occur if the district is considering a full big scale strategic yeah. redistricting versus what Rob's talking about, which is like what the process and the timeline and the communication would be for like maybe a one year adjustment or like an adjustment to a certain cohort yep. kind right. of yep. and and so the first one the bigger one yeah. is going to be like you said it's going to be less often it's going to be more comprehensive and it's going to be hopefully based on like multiple years of data trends you know that we're that we're seeing um the the other one is is going to be more frequent but more like specific to individual circumstances mm -hmm. programmatically school-based grade-based so on and so yeah. forth um and that's where we can talk about that procedural process too where um, you know, that comes down to a lot of communication and, and, and systems we have in place yep. for families to know what the process is and that kind of thing. So I don't know, I'm just saying it, from an administrative point of view, I think it would be helpful to kind of have that distinguished just so okay. it's, yep. it's right out there. Like yep. everybody, all right, here's, here's what we're talking about. Um, I don't know if it's, if you noted this, Jen, but the, and it's, this is my, maybe because I'm looking I'm deep in the transportation one right now. Um, like how to tie like the like transportation for students piece to this piece. Like because that one some of those ones do talk about like transportation, et cetera, because like I know and I know some of ours talk about this a little bit, but I think looking at it like in a bigger picture way. So like for example, like if we request that a family goes to a different school than what they were originally assigned to, we are responsible for transporting them right now, right? But yeah. then if they request it, they are responsible. That part, it says, it doesn't say the first part where yeah. if we do it. Yeah. I think that's implied, but it doesn't say Yeah, it. so I think we need to clarify that yeah. or put it in the Student Transportation Services document because that also talks about like transporting to other districts, all of those sort of things, and then reference this policy as far as transportation yeah. goes. Because I do think that that needs to be outlined in one of them, and it probably makes more sense in the transportation one, but should definitely be pulled over. And also, too, like if we if we involuntarily transfer somebody for year one, and then you know the student opts to stay there for year two, what happens? whose responsibility yeah. is the transportation then? Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is too messy to go to like like do you want I can I, I'm I, happy I'm happy to work with I, you on I can, it too. I can flesh before, it out more. Yeah. Be, we want to do that before it goes to admin. 
Yeah, like just so that Rob doesn't have to. Yeah, I can do that. Edit it through, and then then they could take a look at it, and then also, I think it's important um, to like average. I know we advertise all of our policy meetings, but like put a specific call like to community members okay. to come and give us feedback on this one. Um, I think having parents and guardians involved in the writing of this will just give us a better end product like I know we hear yeah. from them a lot but I think like definitely in saying like hey on this date we like we've done for some yeah. of the other ones like I think we really need to be intentional about getting their feedback as well okay okay um. so is this our intention here is to is to be updating this policy as the redistrict redistricting like process um, like moves up, moves forward. No, like separate. Separate, okay. Yeah, because we need to get it updated for just things like with the kindergarten registration. And okay. Like what happens like if there is. I think know, the goal is to have it done so that it can go. Got it. To that group. Okay. To implement so and then this as first, they. Then that. In theory, okay. like you'd want it. Like I don't think the de the goal is not for that group to develop or right. adapt this policy. It's I think to give them a, a guideline, mm -hmm. knowing what we know because we've gotten some feedback over the, the at least the two years that I've been here mm -hmm. um, that we want to incorporate in writing. And then as you all have those conversations, though, if things come up, like you or Ken could bring that back to policy for for further adjustments, right? Like if you mm -hmm. are going through the process and you're like, wait, we totally forgot to outline this piece that we're now doing, or Hey, this isn't really working for us. Like the school committee could relook at it, but I don't think we want we want them doing the work, not yeah making the plan to do. I the just work. wasn't sure if we wanted like this this to like be so it's not like we want to like check this first and then do that. It's like we kind of have to go right kinda, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But ideally, this would get done. Yeah, I mean, I'll yeah. have this yeah. ready for the next meeting. So yep. yep. Yeah, okay. and if we yep. So we should probably do a call for. Like we should make, if we're gonna have it on, we'd want to prioritize like yep. getting folks that they want to give feedback on it. Uh, um, well, I figured have it ready, have admin for admin to review, and then mm -hmm. we do it, right? Yep. Because our next policy is the twenty. The end eight. of October. Yeah, so we could do the 28th for that, and then... But, I mean, do we want... Don't we want admin to provide their feedback first before... No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, we would see it again on the 28th. Yeah. And then the meeting. And then the that. next Monday is November 4th. That's when admin mm -hmm. council meets, right? Yep. So, like, Rob could send it out on the 28th, and then they could have a week to look yep. at it before... And get feedback back yep. to him. And then... We would see it at the next one. We would go see it at yep. that next November yep. policy. Yep. I'm just trying to make sure that we have it kind of up, locked in up to the school committee before they really get into yeah. the redistricting thing and before the kindergarten registration opens again. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I can't. We should have it. Do that again. The, no, timeline-wise. By the end sense. of November, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so where were those? So um, I talked to Andrew about the, I sent him a draft of the anti-harassment and the Title IX policy. And... Um, we're getting there. It still needs a little bit more um, revision. So that's still in process combining the two. Just to clarify, the two still exist independently. We're just working on making one policy. Mm -hmm. um, Aaron, do you want to do transportation first or school committee meetings? Um, I can do transportation first because it's not ready for consumption, but I did want to get your all's thoughts on like a couple okay. pieces. Um, I just dropped in a very messy first draft of trying to combine and add things to the different one. Let's so basically, do you see it in the folder? Yeah. It's probably not in the one you it's wanted, not, but, I found but you it. can move it. Yeah, I'll move it. Is this the, which one is this? Jen's going to move it. It's just, it's called transportation policy. I just put it in the transportation. But now it's in the transportation yeah. folder. Right. And it is very green because what I was doing is... There's kind of three different things that we need to do. So there's four different policies that reference it, but I'm trying to really focus on non-student conduct ones like we talked about last time and focus on more of like the logistics. Mm -hmm. But what I've been, what's taking me like a while to work through is I'm 
trying to find the gaps, like, because we have so many, like, in this policy, so I've been reading a lot of those other policies, trying to figure out what to bring over, et cetera. Um, so some of the areas that I feel like we need to make some decisions on, and this might be pulling in the director of transportation and even maybe probably not actually director of facilities, probably just director of transportation, is like a lot of the different ones talk about like the fleet and the um, like environmental safety stuff and different things like as far as like policy wise, like how you move a district forward with things like um, bus emissions and mm -hmm. all of those sort of things are like how often should we be looking to replace buses and how do we do that in a like strategic way and that is something that I could not find anywhere no does not exist yeah so I think like working through kind of what our concepts of that is like those are ones that we're going to have to make decisions on about like how do we do rate routine maintenance of buses how do we like look like assess the fleet um, and how do we like do things like getting newer, safer models of buses pulled in? And then also like that environmental piece and like what we want to do with those. And so I wanted your all's opinion on like where that should be in the policy and kind of where, what approach we want to take like language wise so that I can write it, if that makes sense. Is there any, is there anything to work off of with this in terms of any other? I mean, lots of districts have it super clearly outlined. Okay. Um, ours is more like, as a district, like what... We don't want to write something and then immediately have our entire fleet mm -hmm. not in compliance with the policy. Correct. I could not quite find a different way to say that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> yes. like, we have to make decisions about what's realistic versus what's ideal. And if I just wrote what other districts were writing... Sure, yeah. It, so I think... It. It sounds like the first thing might be to just get an assessment of where we are right now yep. with our current fleet. Yep. And that we can kind of go through transportation with? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be super helpful. Just to, because again, like I want to write something that acknowledges and talks about like bus safety standards and whatnot. But yeah, like without knowing that, like we have to hmm. figure out that piece. Because um, I was trying to break it down to kind of the physical vehicles that they were on and then trying to work into. Because obviously we have buses we own, and then buses we don't own, and then, you know, like, we have a combo of how we transport our students. And then mm -hmm. I was going through and working through things like the trans transportation contractor selection, which is a whole different policy, but then also thinking about a lot of those things that we were talking about with the responsibilities, who should handle what, all of those kind of designations, and trying to outline that piece, because we don't... Is any of that have, outlined in the contract? In their contract? In the contract that we have with them. I'll have to go back and double check. About the selection piece or about the... Like about the um, the piece that talks about... Um, for the buses or for the people? The buses themselves. I'll look and see. I'll make a note to myself. Like as far as their like routine safety checks of their buses and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, because we should mirror that language. Um, so there was that piece, and then I have to check the contracts too for like the again like the trans the um, training stuff that we had been talking about. And then um, definitely talking about like the emergency preparedness that I was finding in a lot of different places that we don't have outlined about like what, what our policy is on like emergencies with the buses and kind of that sort of piece and then working in a lot of this like community and parental engagement like piece about like when they're notified and things like that. And also, like, the coordination with local authorities, although I don't believe we have crossing guards in town. Um, so I've been trying to, like, piecemeal it together and should have, like, a pretty 
solid draft by next time, but wanted your all's feedback on, like, things that, like, we must, like, kind of what your yellow things are, Jen, on the bottom of the attendance one, like, yeah. what are additional things that we absolutely want to be worked into these. So, sorry, so is, is, this a, is this new, what we have here, or is this So, kind of... it's a combo. Okay. So, I, to redline this one, it would just be red, like, okay. tip to tail. So, <laughs> right. I just kind of, or no, this one, excuse me. So, I was pulling pieces out that we could keep and then so by this one you mean the EEA one student transportation yeah industry? okay yeah so basically what I'm trying to do is just create a new document that mm -hmm. is pulling in the different kind of what Jen did with the attendance one like it's not word redlining because it. it's but like pulling in important things etc like I have to pull in the um like mileage thing I haven't done that yet so I was trying to work backwards almost of like trying okay. to fill in pieces of things that I knew we wanted to have and then I was going to dump in like what we had from there. So is this sort of like a policy that's encompassing student transportation yep. and and a, a few others or It's uh, going to be student transportation EEA then EEA1 which is transporter contract, yep. contract selection and yep. then my recommendation which I think we had talked about previously is to Sunset E A E C or pull over maybe a couple pieces from it mm -hmm. and then really um, align this one with the student conduct one just in general because there's a lot of overlap with how we expect students to behave on buses versus how we expect them to behave in school mm -hmm. and then like if we need to have a small subsection of that policy that addresses buses that are bus specific but I feel like this policy should be sunsetted. The 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 student conduct policy yeah. yeah. And just have it all kind of live in one place. This one, go live in conduct. Yeah. And all the transportation stuff live Got here. It. And then fill in the gaps from what we have, like as far as like driver and attendance responsibilities, um, like attendance and counts, like mm -hmm. those sort of things. So etc. So it's getting there, but it's much harder than I anticipated. But I should have a better draft for you next time. Three, three things that I would want to see on here. We talked about uh, like restraint training the last time mm -hmm. and, and to address that in here, like yep. in terms of training that they need to have. Um, I don't see it. It might be in here again, like that says, make sure the bus is empty. I think we actually need to spell it yep. out in the policy. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the part that talks about um, the safe stops and loading zones review and adjust bus to ensure that they're located in safe areas. Can we add something uh, that says, um, like, uh, I, I know we do it as a practice, I think, but to have it like formalized if they're if they're in the vicinity of a, a sexual offender, um, to have that so that it's it yeah. must be done. Yeah. Must be moved, yeah. right? I was also thinking about like what do we just based on like feedback that we get from the community etc like what is the outlining what the process is if like they are um, feeling like their children are not at a safe stop mm -hmm. like and kind of just explaining that to folks of like kind of it would go through I would like assume the same trajectory of what ours goes through now like going you first communicate with the director of transportation and then if it was not resolved at that level, then it would go to the superintendent it would, and then to the school committee. But I feel like outlining, especially because of safety, like mm -hmm. outlining that process for folks so that they don't just have to guess or like know right. the inner workings of how to appeal a bus stop yeah. or something like that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm wondering if we should even, if that should be broadened, you know what I mean? Just in general, if there's a concern or a, a, a the parent concern over bus safety, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah like I meant, yeah. yeah, in general bus safety, yeah. 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 But I think just kind of outlining that, I think would be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and then something else that I was thinking about was like the timing of like when, when they get yes. the information, yeah. yeah. The timing of bus routes? Mm -hmm. Like when they get, when their bus time is and where their bus stop is um, and things like that, just. The timing of when they receive that information, yeah, or the, the timing of when the bus is. No, no, no. Like when the parents get that little card in the mailbox. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We don't get a card in the mailbox. We don't get it anymore. No, Jennifer, <laughs> you're aging yourself. 
we get a nice <laughs> email. email or whatever. We don't go look at the school list on the side of the buildings either anymore. The came in the mailbox. It's the yeah. timing of when you receive the timing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, just for like planning purposes, knowing that a lot of families have before and after care accommodations that yep. they need to do, and if they are especially new to the district or it's going to change significantly, like they need to know that more than a week in advance, I think. And so, kind of setting forth some mm -hmm. sort of goal of when we would communicate that to families. Um, it sounds to me like a lot of what we're talking about here should be reviewed by our transportation yep. director. Mm -hmm. yep. So should you, you want like me to facilitate that now or should we wait? So I think the next, it would be the, I want to make it cleaner for mm -hmm. her okay. so that she doesn't have to, like there's, it's similar to these so kind of like one. the attendance one. Yeah. yeah, like let me get it one iteration further and then I definitely want. Michelle's feedback, and then also I think same thing with the parents and community members, like getting their feedback mm -hmm. on this one too. Like if there's anything that mm -hmm. we don't didn't address or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I basically need one more iteration, okay. which I was hoping to have done, but then obviously some things happened this weekend that right. took yeah. priority. So, um, but I didn't want to not bring anything, even though it's messy, because I wanted to see, make sure I knew what your priorities were, so that I could work them in. Um. I'll check, to your point too, Rob, I'll check some of the other districts in the state. Because I looked, I did more of a national poll of like really trying to look for the driver and attendance responsibility pieces. Mm -hmm. But I'll check and see too, like, um, like what's out there for statewide and then also what's out there for like other mm -hmm. districts that might be running similarly to us. Because mm -hmm. I know we're slightly unique, but... Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, we we are unique in, in many ways, but I think there's definitely like overlap in terms yeah. of just the safety yeah, piece. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Anything else with that one? I don't think so. Let's do school committee meetings and then we can try to get to HIV. Um, so we have had um, a couple of requests from citizens and from uh, another school committee member to make some changes to this policy. Um, the first one, um, and I just happened to notice when going through this, if you go down to number three, where it says meeting time and location, it says location, but there isn't anything that actually discusses the location. So I don't know why that's in there. So I'm gonna I'm, add page numbers to this, just. What's that? I'm gonna add page numbers to okay. it. Okay. Just cause it'll be easier. Nope, not and I, there's nothing in the policy that specifies location, so I'm not sure why that says location there. So I feel like that. Where, where are you? I'm sorry. Um, Number three. Oh, I see it. Number okay. three. Meeting time and location. Oh, so it says meeting time and location, but then it doesn't. It, it does, no the way header it, says it, but then the body does not address it. Right. Understood. So I feel like that is something that does not need to be there. Um, so um, this kind of goes to some of the, like, and I just added these in for discussion. So adding a section that says, unless absolutely necessary, all meetings of the school committee or any of its advisory committees shall be scheduled so that the open portion of the meeting does not begin earlier than X, Y, Z. And I added this to address things like scheduling public meetings at 2.30 in the afternoon, 3.30 mm -hmm. in the afternoon. Like, I, I think... To, to put something in there to say that you know we shouldn't unless it's an emergency that mm -hmm. we shouldn't be scheduling mm -hmm. meetings in the middle of what is a typical work day understanding that that's not everybody's work day but you know we shouldn't be and I'm not sure what that cutoff is whether it's four whether it's 4 30 whether it's five like I, I know you know we have these meetings at 4 30 I think building has theirs at 4 30, four, 4 30 also mm -hmm. I think yeah and I think it's thinking about but like obviously no time is going to be perfect for for folks and i also really empathize with the administrators on like they're working throughout the day and then you know then yeah. these extend like their day um and it's 
tricky to flex, I'm sure, like, and not, you know, like... And not go not, p- smoothly right through, yeah. Well, and also, like, like in a different work environment, like, if you had a late meeting, maybe you would not come in in the morning, but, right. like, knowing that it's just probably not how that yeah. works, mm-hmm. um, unfortunately. So I think, you know, for that one, like, I was thinking about most certainly, like, not when school's in session. So I think that I don't know what is the latest school but like I was driving here and I was seeing school buses that were dropping our kids off Mm -hmm. so like like thinking about just that piece of it and like how making sure that we're not overlapping with like when family or community members need to be home to receive their children from the schools that we are sending them home from Mm -hmm. what 345 is the latest one yeah yeah but like they were I was by the turf farms and it was, they don't get home until 4.35, 4.40. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's... Yeah, so that to me is why... I think missile time is better than when they get home, because that's never going to... Yeah, but that's why I was thinking, like, 4.30 is, like, could be a time, or 5. You know, like, we can't go off the traditional work day. Like, there's so many families and community members that work nights, that work different hours. Like, that's, like, the 8.30 to 5, or 9 to 5 thing is... Not yeah. the majority of, of peak folks time, but I was trying to think about aligning it with the school times and making it realistic with that piece. That makes sense. Well, yeah, what do you I think? agree. No, I agree with that. I think that makes sense. So is that four thirty or for, based on the feedback from our audience member it's it sounds like five, it's five based on that. But I'm not advocating for five. <laughs> I think four thirty is sufficient because okay. if I want to make a meeting I pick my kid up and Yeah, I just don't want to ever have a situation where it's like a, a person who really wants to come and see a meeting or talk, like, has to make a decision between getting their kid off the bus right. and being here. Like that, you know, like, so I appreciate that, Pam, but like, also like that, like that would be a choice that like I have to find care for my kid, right. like, to get here kind of vibe. So it's 4.30 or 5 for me, for sure. Um, but, or maybe we can work that. So or something in. we just went through, right, and we did all the, uh, um, we set up all the, and I'm not saying this to advocate to keep them, I'm just doing like a, um, a review of all the times. What we just did, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to look at January. We have some at 4.30, some at so 5. Some health at and wellness is at 4.30, CLAC is at 6.45, policy is at 4.30, budget and finance is at 4.00 building is at 4.30, um, the temporary uh, discipline committee is at 4.30, and DEI is at 5.30. And the co- school committees in theory are at 7 with executive before. Mm-hmm. So almost all of them, the only one that is earlier than 4.30 is budget and finance. That's not so. Like, it, it is definitely... I, th- I, mean, I think it's 4.30 yet. If we want to write something in, like it's probably that. Yeah, because I think the other thing to consider is that, you know, the people who sit, aside from administration, who sit mm-hmm. on the advisory committees, you know, it, it, if it is somebody who um, is working a day job, it's difficult to get to a meeting at 4 o'clock, um, okay. even 4.30, but. Mm-hmm. Um, Four thirty seems fair, I think. Yeah, I think maybe. So I think if we're gonna set a time, say like does not begin earlier than four thirty. But then I also think we need another sentence that talks about like the advice that the chairs of whatever the like whatever level it is like should consider the. I don't want to say this like. Like the schedules of their committee members mm-hmm. and like what's best for the folks that they are serving. serving like, yeah. like I know, like for example, CLAC, which is a slightly different like vibe because of the way that it's mandated by the state. Like, I believe that their meetings are later because it works for their community members that they're trying to reach in attending those meetings. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. something maybe that just acknowledges that like the chairs could should take that into consideration. So when scheduling a meeting, the chairs 
Because um, they obviously have to make sure they have quorum. absolutely necessary. Does that, does that work? Mm -hmm. So when scheduling meetings, the chair of the school committee or any, or any advisory committee should take into consideration what works best for its members and the community it's serving. Unless absolutely necessary, all meetings of the school committee or any advisory committee shall be scheduled at the open portion of the meeting does not begin so earlier than 4.30. It's not chairs of the school committee. It's like the chairs of, because like, um, because like for the school committee meetings, it's it's Ken. It would be the superintendent and the school committee chair would work. Like it's so it's like I'm trying to think of, mm -hmm. or like for the advisory committees, like it's the school committee member and the administration. So the chairs. Yeah, I would just say, well, it works for the advisory ones. How about the the chairs and administration? Because like in theory, the way that our policy is written, there's an admin. Co-chair. Co-chair. So yeah. that's why if we say chairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just doesn't work for the school committee one because it's a little bit different, but that's okay. And scheduling meetings. Like if you write chairs of the school committee, it's going to be yeah, that confusing. Sense. The that chair of the sense. school committee. I would just, I'm saying like when scheduling a meeting, the chairs in administration should take into consideration, okay. like yeah. something like yeah. that, like just so make it simpler. The chairs. And then I don't think you need like the other piece. Yeah. Which one? Like when scheduling school committee or advisory committee meetings, like take make the meetings the thing and instead of the people. Yep. Okay. You take okay. Care. You're like no, those are the scheduling meeting the chairs and the administration. So then the next part that I added was, when meetings of the school committee are preceded by executive session, every attempt shall be made to start the open portion of the meeting no later than 15 minutes after the stated time. If necessary, executive session will be paused and resumed following open session. So I think that that, I completely agree with the feedback about, like, you know I get really stressed when we are not done. Um, the only thing that I can't quite wrap my head around how to solve is when we have multiple hearings for community members mm -hmm. and resuming makes them have to stay till like 9 30 at night like that's the part that i i can't quite rectify in my head about how to make sure that maybe we need to write in language about starting it earlier if there's like multiple things or something to get and that and that's what we've tried to do but like i in practice, this sounds nice, but then what's going to end up happening is that we're going to have a, a family waiting to speak to the school committee right. executive session, yeah, and, and they're going okay. to have to wait till right. nine. And that's where we got into those situations where we started late. Is that like that? Was no, happening. I know. So I think like putting it like this as every attempt, right? So it gives us a yeah. little But I think what we can do for that is we can do one of two things. Like if we see like an executive session thing, we can either start earlier or we can make the open meeting start later, right? Like there's one of two things that we can do. We can say open meeting's gonna start at 7.30, or we can say we're gonna start executive session at five, right? Like like be proactive about where yeah. we start. Well, that's what we, that's what we try to do, but then some things that we think mm -hmm. won't take right. long, Right, and there's never gonna be some things, perfect. Yeah. Some things, like somebody comes in with a 40 page document yeah. that they want us to review and work through. Like, yeah. sure. you know, so it's, I'm trying to figure out like what the because I also want to be respectful of people's time. Like I don't. So if we if we and, and we've we've dealt with this right where mm -hmm. we have a situation where there's, you know, an executive session proceeding, hearing, etc. That goes a little longer than we expect. Um, 
It says here, if necessary, the executive session will be paused and resumed following open session. I think Aaron's point is valid that that might not be necessarily possible or, or, or you know, like, um, you know, the most respectful thing to do to make people wait for that. Mm -hmm. So what would be the other option? Because because I think I, I can't. I think it, it, it's it's. It's reasonable that's going to happen where hearings may take longer mm -hmm. in executive session than anybody predicts. Yep. And that's that's not something yeah. that... Anybody can control, yeah. right? It just happens, yeah. So I think that if that's the case, I think if you're the person involved in that hearing, I think what you'd hope is that you'd have some flexibility with how that gets resumed. If after the meeting is not possible, then maybe it has to be rescheduled at a future meeting. I don't know, like if I was a parent, right, and I was in for a hearing about my child, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want two things. I wouldn't want us all sitting there going, oh my God, it's True. 7 12. Yeah. And yep. I also wouldn't True. want to have waited for today mm -hmm. only to be told, sorry, yeah. we didn't have enough well, time. Well, and on some of the ones, like it, it impacted like things. Immediately. Yeah, like, yeah. like school yeah. was starting, yeah. right. decisions. Yeah. Like it, that's yeah. where. Are, that's right. Are like I always, that, like, try, like, I always yeah. try to stop us exactly on time. Yep. Yeah even if we have more work to do. Mm -hmm. But like those were ones that were very time sensitive that it was gonna negatively impact the student if we follow what we have written here. Yeah. And so it's trying to figure out that balance. And I think it and it could be so the alter to answer your question, Rob, the mm -hmm. alter the things that we have tried or done mm -hmm. differently is um we have paused, come back to the main one, like the the open session. Mm -hmm had citizens comments mm -hmm. and then gone back in mm -hmm. so like we took a pause like mid meeting and went back in so it wasn't okay. as long and that's usually when we have folks that are affected by like the later executive so it's session. like pause executive op uh, open session citizens yep. comments back to executive yeah okay. we've done that we've paused and then gone back at the end okay um we've okay. deferred to the following week like the, the next meeting mm -hmm. which is two weeks usually um which was, we, we had that too that once and they were, like I felt so badly because mm -hmm. they came, they had their representation, like it was a lot mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that was not ideal. Um, I don't think we've ever. Well, we've also had executive sessions that we've scheduled on their own. So they're not on their own though, because you have to, we vote in No, I mean, right, Like right, we've right. done special meetings. Special meetings, I'm saying. For executive yeah. session, right. like only topics. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's a variety of things. I've looked, I, when I like became school committee chair, I looked to see what other schools do. They have a variety of ways that they do it. Like some of them like do their, their comments differently so that they're only, they allow the comments for the specific topics. So, like they, it's a pretty mixed bag of how mm -hmm. other districts handle this challenge. Um, I think, I think one consideration would be, and this is more of a, procedure thing and a policy thing is like especially at the beginning of the school year maybe holding a special session just to hear like parent and guardian grievances might be like an appropriate thing to do because then it doesn't have we don't have other agenda items mm -hmm. on like just knowing mm -hmm. that cyclically like in that august yeah. september zone there's usually a couple that need to be heard so that could be like a practical solution um So, I mean, we can either... You could change the part of where it... Res and then, if necessary, executive session will be paused and resumed. Maybe instead of saying following open session, like, just say and resumed, because that gives the flexibility of resuming mm -hmm. after citizens' comments versus having to wait until the end of the open session. Yeah. Like, the way it's written, you have to wait until the end of open session. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, I mean, we certainly are not sitting in here, like just chit-chatting like every time it no it's got over, it's got wrenching yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not fun um but I, I think we owe it to the people that we're like attending to during executive to not have to like end it at a time that it shouldn't be ended at right yeah. but I think like if we are saying you know if we're at least acknowledging that you know we're gonna make every effort, which I think we already are. I don't think we're not making every effort. Um, and if that means that we have to go back to it at some point 
either during the meeting or after, maybe that's a happy medium. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I, I think um, I think as long as there's some flexibility work then, because your, your citizens' comments is one piece. I know all, often we have presentations happening yep. at school yeah, committee guests, meetings, yeah. and, and you have people coming in to like you know you don't want to keep them waiting, right. you know. Um, so so I think that as long as yep. I think that looks okay if necessary executive session will be paused and resumed it gives us flexibility it gives the the, the, the family's flexibility or whomever is meeting the executive to make that happen in a way that is most accommodating can we put something in about like communication to the community so like one time i can't remember what happened but i asked like victor Chaz to like post a message on the website saying like like communicating the delay like you know something like like we did something where I was like, hey, can you go on? Maybe we had a tech issue and I was like, post and let them know it was like, the what tech was going issue, on. Yeah. But like, I wonder if it's something about, like same thing about if we are gonna be 50, even 15 minutes late at the time that the open meeting is supposed to start, like having someone come and, and communicate to the folks waiting, like the time and mm -hmm. whatnot, like making sure that that process happens so that they're not just sitting waiting. Um, Cause like, we're assuming that every person that comes will have read this right. and knows right. that we're, yeah. you know, like, so me, and also with the folks waiting for online, like maybe putting in some language about communication. Yeah. If a, a meeting needs to be delayed, I just keep going back to like, the business of the school committee is to, obviously like we have like certain areas that we oversee and like the biggest like client that we have is the students. And like, so it sucks to make people wait, but like it also sucks to not make a decision for a student that really needs to be made for their well being and their academic goals because we have to follow this 15 minute rule when like 20 minutes might have gotten them a decision. Right. Like that's like the reality of the balance. Like it's, we're trying to balance respect on multiple ends. So it's really tricky. And then like the other piece of the like respect time bubble is when we have executive session, we start at six and we have one thing, it takes five minutes. And then I've got the entire committee and all the administration waiting 55 minutes mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the meeting starts. Right. And that happens right. sometimes, yeah. right? So. Like that piece I'm less concerned about, but that's another reality of like, if I said, okay, well, we're gonna start executive session at 5.30 every night, like there's potential that like, yeah, we're sitting there for an hour yeah, right, doing nothing yeah, and we yeah. can't be in the same room and right. we can't talk about stuff. Like it's not a productive use either. So right. it's trying to find that middle, I think. Um, so, I mean, I think it's fine as written because it gives flexibility, but, and then obviously like the superintendent and I can continue to like work on the, procedurally part of it. I mean, but. we can not put anything and just keep doing what we've been doing, but I mean, putting this in acknowledges that we're... I mean, is there something that we could put in here that acknowledges, like, sometimes, like, so, so, I'm trying to think of how to say it, like... So what, what I'm thinking of is this, like, and this isn't 100% of the time, but a fair amount of the time, I think, we can anticipate potentially longer executive session mm -hmm. topics. Um, in those cases, maybe we want to say something like when possible to schedule a special meeting. Yeah, or start earlier. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we want to put that as language in yeah, there, but like I just know that when we're, because I agree with you, when you're under the gun to try to get something done, that's not the best way to make a decision that's important. Right. I don't think scheduling executive sessions separate from the regular meetings as a practice is a good idea. Only because, like, right. look at how much trouble we had finding dates for the advisory committee meetings, sure. right? So to, to try to have quorum yep. for that, I think, is difficult, right? Like, we all have the school committee dates blocked out on our calendar. Um, and, you know, there's concern about too many meetings and that's just adding yeah. another one automatically. Like, it's one thing to schedule it because there's an emergent issue that needs to be addressed. Yeah, and I agree with that. Yeah. Believe me, I'm not advocating for more meetings. <laughs> yeah. I want to go on the record saying, <laughs> yeah, I um, I'm, say, I'm saying just like in, in terms of if we, if we anticipate that there is a, a, a pretty unique special, special case where it's likely that a more prolonged discussion might happen. I'm saying in those unique cases, but yeah, I mean we could always do not that. as a common practice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So she's adding, based on the executive committee agenda, the school committee chair and the superintendent will, to their best ability, determine the time needed and adjust the start time 
of the executive meeting or school committee meeting before posting the agenda. We can make that better, but like yeah. it's not yeah. like it's not quite a good sentence, but like like and that's what we do in practice, right? Like we will say, oh, we've got three things, like we've got to start at five thirty, mm -hmm. or can we find out if we even have quorum yeah. at that time? Because yeah. not every because the school committee members usually yeah. need six. Like what you know, they plan on six, um, for their families and everything. And then but like if we do know, like that is it. Or you could even add if you wanted to, like one more sentence about the like if it is something that will be lengthy, like having a like like designating a special meeting for it, like you could put that in. But I think that's just a practice. I don't think that's a policy thing. Like that's just gotta be it's a practice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But this at least gives some because it does talk about time in this section of what time meetings are yep. and whatnot, and so at least that acknowledges the time piece of that it can be adjusted if the executive needs to be longer, or pushing the school committee meeting to start at seven thirty, like we've done that before too for like open session. Yeah, no, I think that's good. Um, so the next thing was there was a request to change the hour of adjournment from majority consent to unanimous consent. Um, so I, I like that it is up to the committee on what to do. And like I, obviously, like we inherited like the ten and ten thirty, like time frame, from like the prior committees. So like I don't like I think if depending on what the committee wants to do, like that time is up to the committee, right? I do have concerns about unanimous because if you move to unanimous, that means that one person makes the decision instead of the committee making the decision. Mm -hmm. Like even on really big important decisions, like we just need a simple majority. Like the budget passes on a, on a majority. Yeah. The like there's no I don't to my knowledge no vote that needs unanimous consensus. Like I understand like where the committee member that put this in is coming from, but like I I don't quite understand like the intent. Like if if three members of the school committee right now say yes, we need to finish this business. Like that is. I think good enough like I think that like make, is consistent with how we vote otherwise and I also think it's fine that like three members of the school committee could say nope like we're done like like I like that the committee gets to choose that for yeah, lack of a better I, word. I'm concerned it just I think if we do everything by majority consent nothing is by unanimous consent and the the ability for one person to make that decision is concerning. I agree that the meetings have been long but I think that points to a, an issue with the agenda um, and the preparation for the meetings, and I think that's where the focus needs to be um, in terms yeah. of streamlining that, um, and and you know doing what we can for that. Um, because I think if you look back historically, it hasn't been you know like that, and I think that's more the yeah. issue than anything else. Well, I think it's also a balance of what work we're trying to do and. Like having in a new administration That's what I and mean. like working yeah. through some yep. of the things yep. with that. Um, that being said, though, like also, like there are certain things that the administration like needs the school committee to do on certain time frame things, like purchasing things yep. and different things. And I have like a massive concern of like if we there was something on the agenda item, it's it comes up and it's ten o'clock there's one or two items left and like one of those items happens to be something that is very time sensitive like the fact that one person could say no and then we aren't able to do that work that we are assigned to do for the administration like I think that is a thing um, I do think that um, the other piece of this that like the committee doesn't take advantage of but they could is like when they make the motion to extend it like they could put parameters on that and so it doesn't have to be open-ended mm -hmm. like any committee member can make that motion and they could make a motion saying like i move that we extend the meeting to 11. like it doesn't have to be open-ended mm -hmm. and so they have that authority like with robert's rules to create the motions that they want and so that's another piece 
of it is that they have the ability to set the time frame that the committee is agreeing or not agreeing to. Yeah, or like, do I extend the, the meeting to do agenda item A, B, C? Yeah, like, like just to hit this. Yeah. Like it yeah. doesn't have to be this yeah. like open-ended whatever. Like they could just say like, I, yeah, like they could write it to for mm -hmm. agenda specific yep. or whatever. Um, the one thing I think that we can also do a better job of is like uh, on meetings where we have a long agenda and we have like three presentations, that's a killer, right? Like that, I think. So just doing a better job with, you know, paying attention to the agenda creating itself, I think we'll cut down on it. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, and I know Ken expressed his concerns about like, you know, adding things to the agenda, but like before, and I'm gonna date myself here, like when, when Mary King was here, like we would get the agenda packet on Thursday, we would have all the backup, and we could email any questions to her, and she would answer every single question, so that by the time the meeting came around, like any questions that members had, had already been addressed, right? And that saved a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So if we could get to the point mm -hmm. here where we could do that, that would save a lot of time. Yeah. Um, and I think that would help too. Yeah. I think too, like with the presentation piece, like maybe thinking about, I don't know if this needs to be in policy, but like, um, like a lot of times those end up happening because of availability of who's presenting, mm -hmm. like the, you know, what's going on. Like we request them as a school committee, the administration wants us to be aware of some due to like, Things that are coming up that we then need to vote on um so that's how like like my personal opinion would be like one presentation a meeting mm -hmm. is more than enough um but that is not usually the reality of just kind of how it ends up happening and so i think it could be similarly like having those presentations in advance and being able to ask questions in advance too like that yes. often takes yeah. like time as well yeah. Yeah, so yeah. i don't know if we want to outline anything about that piece also I think it all goes back to just, I mean, following the policy when it comes to agendas, period, right? Um, and I did add something in here on setting the meeting agenda about when preparing the agenda, the length of the meeting should be kept in mind. Um, I added that. I mean, that's another one, though, that like sounds very nice in actuality, and then in reality, like I'll be like, oh, well, like when Ken and I are going through with the vice chair and with the clerks and we're looking at it, like I write like on the agenda, like what I think the estimated times will be yeah. and like look at it in that sense. And then sometimes the committee has a lot of questions. Sometimes the admin wants to provide a yeah. lot of information. Like it, it's a best guess, yes. like at best. And sometimes a really short agenda and sure, be really long yeah. and sometimes yeah. vice versa. So I think what I, I completely like agree, right but it's not schedule four presentations. Yeah. You know, that, like, like that to yeah. me is like kind of where I was going yeah. with there. So, I mean, we could take that out. I think the problem mind. there though, and I don't know if we can policy this is whose priority takes priority then. So like if the administration wants the high school principal to come and talk about X, Y, Z, yeah. And the school committee has requested the truancy officer come and talk about X, Y, Z, which presentation gets bumped. Mm -hmm. Like that's the, that's mm -hmm. for me where we usually end up with right. multiple because I don't want to say, I want to work with the administration on, on what that's we're trying to achieve. Point, right. And it's not, it's not that simple. Like, I don't know how that's to say point, it. Like it, yeah. like which one goes first? Like, yeah, so that's, that's where it, it's tricky. Or we invite the truancy officer on the September 18th meeting and they write back and they say, oh no, I can only come in October. Right. So now we have October, but then we also have this other one that had already been planned. Like so that's where like I get, it, I totally get it, but like in actuality as, as, as a practice, a practice, it's really challenging, but I think we can put things in there about it. And then also I think the biggest thing is like, it's okay to end at 1030, but like making sure that we get through time sensitive things. Mm -hmm. And then, all, but also trying to balance letting people have voice in the meetings. Yeah. Like, I don't want to cut people off when they're talking or asking questions. You know, like, I'm, for me, it's big on, like, yes, it's one thing to be efficient, but also we want voice of the school committee members and the administration, mm -hmm. like, in those combos. So maybe we can. Do you want me to take that sentence out? Where it? In setting the meeting agenda. When preparing the I agenda, mean, the length of the meeting should be kept in mind. I mean, it, no, you can leave it in, but like it, 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 in practice, it already, 
is, but we can keep it in for um, sure. And then another thing that one of the, I know it's six, but I just want to try and get through this if we can. No, Jen, we're ending the meeting. On <laughs> I know. Um, uh, we had a request from a citizen um, about uh, exempting items from the consent agenda, mm -hmm. which I actually I thought, thought that was, was a very valid. Idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I actually was wondering. But I was wondering, so I know that it's on the town council one. Yep. Um, but then I was I was trying to think of, like, I am 100%, like, it makes sense to me, but then I was trying to think of the way that our meetings run, like, if they had an issue with a, a consent agenda item, the citizens would have the opportunity to express that during citizens' comments, which I always make sure come before any votes. So then if a citizen wanted us to pull something out, like, are we allowing them to speak again on that specific item? You know what I mean? Like, I was trying to think of, like, why... That's the way the town council does it. Yeah, but that's not kind of how you're supposed to do meetings like that, unless it's, like, explicitly stated, because, like, the whole open... You know what I mean? Yeah, I know we could say before, at the start of the meeting, before citizens' comments, does anybody have an item that they'd like to exempt from the consent agenda? And if somebody does, we could say, do you, do you want to speak on it? If so, citizens' comments is the time. Yeah, but like, what's the point of the exempt, like, of pulling it out then? I, I understand, no, I, I mean, but, but also, I'm just, in my yeah. mind, I think they, and I, I don't want to speak for them, they yeah. were probably envisioning it like um, either two things. Either they want there to be a discussion, which they don't want to participate in, but they want there to be a discussion about it versus just passing, or they want the ability to ask a question, which in theory could be done in citizens' comments anyways. But um, I, in my mind, I think they were envisioning a procedure like what the town council does. Like, does somebody want something exempted? Okay, why? What's your issue with it? Like that type of thing. Yeah, so I think we just have to be clear about when that request needs to be made and when the citizen speaks on that, I guess. Does the town have language on that? No. No. Well, they don't? No, no. No, it literally just says any citizen can exempt an item. Yeah, they do it at the time that they're calling the consent agenda. So like, the, it, like, makes sense, but then so I was, the, like, thinking through it and so it didn't the citizen make sense. who would wish to do that would have to be present at the meeting? Yes. Okay. No, or they can't ask for it in advance? I have never seen a case yeah. where they have, like, They can email that. and say, hey, you've got a consent agenda item, I'd like it pulled out, I wonder. I, I mean, maybe they could. Yeah. I, have, I have never experienced them saying we had a request from a citizen to pull yeah. that. Might be worth looking into maybe more... I mean, we could, we could do that. We could say, if anybody wants an item pulled, you know, please email us mm -hmm. prior to the meeting. Yeah. Okay, so a consent agenda. So it says a consent agenda um, is a group's routine meeting discussion points into a single agenda item. So I think, too, like clarifying what should be in a consent agenda and not with the new clerk will be really important because, like, to me, a consent agenda is like meeting minutes and like like really very routine, simple things that like you go through and there should not really be things that are new business or unfinished business in a consent agenda, in theory. I think my guess is, because we always put bids and purchases in there, that... Yeah. Um, yeah, financial statements is one that really honestly shouldn't probably be in a consent agenda. No, it shouldn't because we're yeah. not approving them. Right, yeah. like, and so that shouldn't be in there. And yeah. I don't know if we can create a separate section for bids and purchases, and then it doesn't have to be like pulled, right? Like, because yeah. I'm just thinking, okay, so, and again, I'm not against the concept, like, I, and especially because our town council has it, like, I'm fine if it goes through. But I was then I was thinking about like the actuality of it. So a citizen comes up during during comments and says, um, I noticed that you have blah 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 in your consent agenda. I would like to request the committee pull it out. And so then as chair, I'd say, okay, no problem, we pull it out. And then I'd say, okay, item D1. And then maybe they speak about it. They say, you know, blah, 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 blah. Then I pull out and I say, okay, we go through the consent agenda. And I say, okay, we're pulling out D1 for the citizen's request. And then, but the committee members wouldn't have requested it out. So then I get to the motion and the discussion of that. They have none. And then we vote on it. Like that, like that's the part that I can't figure out the 
the reason for it, if that makes sense? I, my guess is it's to engage in a question and answer on it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, let me, maybe I can do more research into it. Because, again, when I saw that request come in, I thought, huh, that, like, I can see that. But then... Maybe ask Andrew whether he knows of any school districts that do it. Yeah. Because yeah. I know school districts in general are more, like, like... It's supposed to streamline on a collective, routine, non-controversial items. So, like, anything that, like, really... Need, like, sometimes we accept stuff because somebody wasn't at a meeting and they don't want to vote on it. Sometimes we'd pull it out if whatever, but like other than that, like it should not have anything that would be quote unquote controversial or like. I know I've pulled stuff yeah. out because I've had questions, right? But so like, should those things have been in there? Is the question. That's a different question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm happy to. I mean, we can add it for the version that goes up to the school committee, but. Okay, I'll leave it as saying a citizen who wishes to request an item to be removed from the consent portion of the agenda may do so by, and then we can work out the rest of it prior to actually submitting the policy does that work i mean i think you can write by requesting it during citizens comments do so. i'd like to like look into why that would exist and like maybe it's like amending it later okay um, to make it more functional like i'm not like i don't want to just do it procedurally like i want to do it to get to what they're trying to get at which is they have questions like you know like I want it to be like if a citizen does have a concern about something on the consent agenda that we get to the goal of why they why would pull it out, not just pull it out for the sake of pulling it out, out for the sake of pulling yep. it out. Thank you. Um, the other thing I just wanted to uh, address is two things left. One is the wait. Term. I wanted to, we didn't get. I wanted Rob's opinion on the unanimous versus not unanimous as an administrator that has to sit through <laughs> meetings and doesn't have a vote about whether or not we extend them. Well. I think the length of meetings concern is real. 100%. It's a real, it's a real concern. Um, I want to go back actually to, you know, Jen brought up a good point earlier about past practice, I guess, with previous administration. Um, I wasn't here for that, obviously, but but from what you described, that sounds, that sounds ideal, what you described about. <laughs> yeah, like it sounds ideal yeah. in terms of, okay, agenda, questions, response, meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to get back there. I think we can get back there. I know a, what would really, really go a long way in terms of getting back to that point is, is to have the, the agenda items in according to like what the policy language reads. Um, because I know that, I know now we have the clerk situation, which is a good thing, which is a good development and we're looking yeah, forward yeah. to that. But, but in the current situation with clerks having obviously a lot of responsibilities um, in the office beyond that, it makes it very challenging. So I, I would I would really emphasize that. I think that it can really speak yeah, to I think I think to your point, that's a huge and important change in all of this conversation because that was always a concern we had was that like getting those attachments together is a job mm -hmm. in, in addition to X, Y, Z. And yeah. then, you know, so I think hopefully that will help with some of these efficiency issues because some of that is those pieces or things getting added on both sides, like, mm -hmm not in accordance to our policy. Like it's not just the school committee adding some things, sometimes the administration has to add things too. And so hopefully having the clerk dedicated to that process will be helping it. Mm -hmm. um, the unanimous piece, I think, I think your, your concerns you raised were valid, um, but I do think that it's clear that we need to take some steps to make the meetings go more efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that, you know, who can predict the future? We, we, we don't know. I can understand there's precedent here in terms of majority votes for everything else. Um, and unanimous votes is concerning to a certain extent because we don't envision the future. But I do think I do think the public is looking for us to take some hard steps to. I mean, my sleep to, and mental health is also requesting that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, think we're all know, are, I mean, that, I mean yeah. one thing I know is that is that people are very interested in the, the business that gets done at our meetings and. Um, the length that they're going to is, is, a, is a really big ask of people to really keep up on the, the school department's work. I do think another addition that we could maybe put in, and I don't know if this is exactly connected with the policy, but we might be able to, to put it in, is um, the town council does a nice job. They give chapters. And mm -hmm. so if you're only mm -hmm. interested in a specific yes, talking point helpful. on yeah. their videos, you can click on chapters. Yeah. So I wonder if that's something that we could talk to RIT people about or have them learn from the town on how they do that. Because I do think... To that point, like you don't want to have to like muddle through, even if it's we start at seven, 
like a three hour meeting looking for the one thing that you wanted to hear the school committee talk about. So I think that might yeah, be because I've done that going back to look for something and it is a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's so not. I, me too. And like the town, it's nice. Like you yeah. like, oh, look, this is when they talk about yeah. the bus transportation. Great. You know, so I think I agree with you, Rob, that everyone in the Everyone around the table wants it to be more efficient, but also that might be something to help if we do have one, mm -hmm. if they're looking for a specific things so that they don't have to watch all of the topics if they have a time constraint. Yeah, I mean, because my, my I, like, I, I, I didn't disagree with any of the data that was presented, but I would say that if you go back to before this administration, none of those numbers existed. And even allowing for, like, important like things that we're trying to fix and trying to correct i think a lot of it goes back to following the policy yep. for the agenda and mm -hmm. having the packet and having the information be provided with questions on the agenda before yeah. and the complete. meeting yeah um and i think if we get to that practice the rest of the conversation mm -hmm. goes away yeah i think it'll get better yeah um but also like we have to acknowledge in the past year like we had a brand new administration that like, uh, I was trying to give grace, oh, like, whenever we I could, too, but, but I, also... What yeah. I'm saying is, like, just arbitrarily saying we must end the meeting is not fixing the actual problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, the, what we need to do is get better at having the preparation done in advance of the meeting. Yeah, so I, think, I, wonder... I, think, I think just being, um, just, just kind of honoring the language there. Yeah. You yeah. know, so it's, so it's 12 days. You know, in the advance of a meeting for for an agenda item, so we should be we should be planning two meetings ahead. Yep. You know, I mean, we I adjusted think... that right so that it could be. Did we adjust that in the last version? Because it, it, I think it used to be. It used to be fourteen, I think. Yeah, and I think we intentionally adjusted it because I said that that just wasn't realistic because you can't know what you want to talk about prior to the meeting. I think that's why we made it. Yeah, so that, like, yeah. we purposely yeah. made it so that, like, mm -hmm. it's 12, but, like, before, you would have to submit it before the next, the meeting had already happened, mm -hmm. and that, to me, wasn't realistic because something could come up in the meeting that yeah. you're like, hey, that needs to be on the next agenda, and there was no way to add mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But, like, realistically, the agenda-setting meeting is not happening 12 days in advance. Exactly. Right. That's why so I'm saying, I don't think any items... So we're already items... set up yeah. to fail, right? Right. So, like, the agenda-setting meeting we're having should be for that, not the upcoming meeting, but the meeting after the upcoming right. meeting. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. Right. I know but it that, doesn't, but, but, it, but it, it, it's, yeah. it's... Yeah. No, it, you're not wrong, but then I think, well, I guess the question then would be like, what, when do we, how do we allow an exception? Like, that's the biggest question. So like, if something comes up and it, the agenda hasn't posted yet and we, we need to address it, like, is it just a sorry? Right. Like, you well, can't put I, it I on? Well, think, I think it's two things, right? Is so, it with school committee approval? Like, is it... Like, you know, like, does the clerk email the school committee and say, you know, we've had a request from the administration or the school committee to add this additional item? Like, please write back and say if you approve it or not. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, that's what happens is, like, things come up and then yeah. you're like, ugh. Yeah. So, like, when, when are, how do we make the decision of when to break that policy? Or is it like, no, like, I absolutely not. I don't care that it's negatively. No, we are already vetting yeah. it. Yeah. Because I feel badly when there's things that are affecting students or mm -hmm. things that come up that we need to. No, no, no. I just add. mean like in general, right? Because if we yeah. are having an agenda meeting oh, yeah, it's on already Monday set before up. the yeah. meeting, it, it's already like within. So, so, so I've, I've asked this question once yeah. on the last meeting, and I asked, and Jen, maybe like you have past precedence with this more so than than Aaron and I. Has this been a practice under previous? No. Okay. No. In terms of twelve days, mm -hmm. I mean. No, they weren't doing that no, either. No. Yeah, I asked that when yeah, I came on. No. It's just not like... But before there was somebody who was managing, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. the agenda, mm -hmm. who was making sure that all the attachments were there, who was available to ask questions, right? And it was responding. Like, that Got was it. somebody's position. Okay. And I think that is, you know, that makes a difference, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, so... Okay. We eliminated that position, though. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, so that 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 is a change from what we don't have that anymore. So, um, okay. That is that is a change. I can't. So, citizens' comments. Um, we've had we've heard from people about um, you know the timing of citizens' comments, and I think we touched on this in one of the other discussions about how we usually have citizens' comments after the presentation, so that if people have questions, they're not 
you know, asking them before. Getting the information, yeah. So I don't know if we just want to say that, you know, it'll be like the first thing on the agenda after presentations, if we want to formalize that, or if we just want to continue it as a practice. No, I think we should. I personally think that that is how it should work, that the, like, if people, like the administration or whomever is presenting, like, gets to present the information so that citizens are making informed comments, and then they come up because I, we've had it in the past where it was flip-flopped because like the presentations were in the business part of the yeah. meeting like they weren't in the presentation part and we would sit and listen to to very well-meaning citizens for like 45 an hour and then the person would come up and they'd present and you'd see the faces be like oh, oh like okay, oh i yeah. see you know like so i think that's where i started we started that practice of having those go first because like, we, of course, want to hear what the citizens have to say, but we want to make sure that they have the information mm -hmm. before that. Um, but I think to Jen, your point of, like, trying to limit those are, is important. Because I don't think we can say citizens' comments will start at 7.30. Like, even if we start the meeting at 7, you could have four presentations that last 45 minutes, and we, we're not going to stop the presentations in the middle. No. The thing that the thing I'm thinking of though is that not all presentations are the same in terms of how they relate to citizens. Comments. What if we did? Yeah. What if we did presentations that the board is voting on, like like just like um, so for example, if we want to hear from the high school principal about the mm -hmm. uh, program of study, that presentation happens because we're voting on it later that day, and then citizen comment happens. But then there's another presentation on truancy but we're not making any decisions it's just an fyi presentation like we could do that is that what you were saying Rob? kind of because like i just know that like we do a lot of presentations for a lot of different reasons we do showcases we do we do right, like you the know chorus is coming right we're like we do a lot of things yeah. to celebrate student successes yeah. that aren't necessarily going to in all likelihood be the topic of citizens comments yeah um but other ones like you said are voted on items that are probably more relevant to that I'm okay with that, but just in this scenario, what happens, right? So we give a presentation on like RICAS scores, mm -hmm. right? And then we have citizens' comments for 45 minutes, and the chorus from Wickard Middle School has to sit here for 45 True. minutes through citizens' comments. Valid. Mm -hmm. Just putting that out there. Well, how about this? So the, 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 the request was for a 7.30 mm -hmm. citizen's comments. Yeah, and that, that, no matter what, I don't want to put a time like that. Like, if, if we were to put any sort of time frame, I'd want to put, like, 30 minutes after the meeting starts because you don't want to say 7 o'clock and then the meeting starts at 6. You know, like, like you want to, that doesn't, they're not always the same start time. Right. So, like, I would want to put that in. Um... Citizens also like have the option to email us to like it's coming to meetings is one way to have your voice like heard from the committee. What would be like fair and just? I think scheduling them first after present. It's either we schedule them first, like absolute first thing, and we have the presentations after, or we schedule them first after the presentation. I I don't I don't think that. I mean, some school committees do it at the very, very end, right? Like, yeah. so. Some do it at the end and some do it like right before the agenda item. Yeah. So like, anyone have citizens comments regarding the transportation right. thing. Right, right. Like the they do them like, yeah. yeah. And then some do do them at the very end. Yeah. So, which I did not like, like I don't. No, you shouldn't have to wait yeah. for the whole meeting. Mm -hmm. But I also get why some do that because they want them to hear. But then I didn't like that we'd be voting on things before hearing from like like that never that was not what right. I wanted to do by any means. That's why I never we never built it like that. I mean I think we put some language in it has to be something about like like the goal like like something about like ideally or you know, like it has to have some soft language like we did with the other one uh, with the executive to like basically say like the intent is to allow for citizens comments within this time frame so that people can schedule their within day in the life. first hour. That's probably more realistic. I think I, I don't think a half hour hours, is realistic. I mean. OK. 
could we put first hour and then could we put something where like if they want to submit their comments in writing to the clerk to be read during citizens comments like you know like say they can't stay for mm -hmm. an hour and they were hoping that it was going to be quick but then it wasn't like we had a presentation that was important it wasn't quick like something where, that they know like that they could submit it to be read like when citizens comments come up something like that um or something to acknowledge that they can send comments in advance, like in the policy. Like I know we do that in practice, but yeah, I mean people can always send us stuff that we read ahead of time. Yeah, but it's not explicitly said there in the citizens' comment mm -hmm. section, right? Yeah, policy-wise. Um, so as a practice, citizens' comments will be scheduled within the first hour of the open portion of the meeting. Brad, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. It's, 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 it's tricky. I want to go back to really quickly what the request was. 7.30. So it says, the special time for citizens comments shall commence no later than 7.30 p.m. during any regular meeting of the North Phoenix House School Committee. Like, um, it's valid and, right? Like, like, in a perfect world, yes, that totally makes sense. But mm -hmm. then, like, to your point, like, we do a business presentation, we want them to hear it so that they can speak if they have questions or comments on that. Mm -hmm. But then you have then you have an hour long and then you have the sixth graders from mm -hmm. DMS yeah. that we're trying to acknowledge and whatever waiting. You know, like I that's the tricky part of it. I think we put an hour in and we move it forward to the school committee and then if they want to adjust it they they can. Like, I think an hour is realistic. 30 minutes makes me very nervous mm -hmm. about, like, how fast. But I also, like, get yeah, that people are trying to plan their schedule and, and whatnot. Yeah. You could do two. One before presentations and one after. Can you do two different citizens' comments? Sure. Yeah, but that, you could definitely do that. But that is tricky because, again, when we have outside folks or outside guests or students, it's like, you start with that and you've got 30 people signed yeah. up. You're there till 8 p.m. like listening right. to you know like that that again like causes yeah. that challenge I mean I think that I think that like you know when we talk about we, we don't what we don't want this to do is we don't want this to put a um, limit or a, or, or, or downplay that the presentations we do because we've, we've seen that those presentations speak a lot to the great work going on that our students are doing that our community is doing that our teachers are doing so we don't want that to become like a like an outcome of this, where that becomes like a, um, you know, like that 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 becomes less important. Um, we never want to do that. I think bringing it to the to the hour is is reasonable, and I think that can be worthy of some discussion at the school committee. Yeah, like it you know, at least it, let, it at least sets a guideline of like intent and like can help give the school committee chair and the superintendent and those building the agenda like a. a guideline of like mm -hmm. hey okay like if each of these presentations is 20 minutes and we have this many like this is not citizens comments isn't going to happen in that hour and that's a problem you know like so mm -hmm. it at least gives like a, a time awareness. frame yeah. yeah 30 minutes to me is just a little tight like as far as like hopefully it's within 30 minutes like that's always my mental goal is that by 7 30 we're at, at citizens comments at the latest but so is, I, is, as, the way I have it written now is, as a practice, citizens' comments will be held within the first hour of the open portion of the meeting. Like whenever possible, or when, it has to have some whenever caveat. Possible. When? And then I would add something about other ways that they can get comments to the committee. Do, do we want to say citizens' comments will be held do we want to say after presentations within the first hour or no? No, I think we're just saying within, within the, the first, first hour. hour. Okay. Yeah. I think though, to the point though, like just saying the first hour, that means that we could get through it. If we don't designate that it's directly after presentations, then we could vote before, like a committee could vote before citizens' comments. And I think that that should not happen. I think policy wise, citizens we should. Citizens' comments will be. Scheduled like before, before the business. any votes take place and within the first hour of the open portion of the meeting. 
when possible. Like when yeah, possible. Yeah, I put whenever possible first. Yeah. Okay. Like it's better than what we have documented now. Yeah, I think I think it shows that you know that is what we're trying to do. Okay, oh. we can get this one last one in, and then we'll end it at six thirty. So the is, irony of us going. I know, I know, I know, epic. I know. Epic. So epic. <laughs> this is about the minute. So we have had a request uh, to make a process for anyone to request an amendment to minutes. Um, Where are we now? I'm sorry. Under right. meeting minutes number 11. Okay. So, I mean, we have that process now, right? So if a citizen was reading our minutes and they had a concern that there was an inaccuracy, like they absolutely could communicate that to prompt like a review, and like in theory, like right? Correct. I think yeah. this arose from a, a request to change the minutes that was denied. So it more goes to like what is in the minutes? Yeah. Like what, how much details in the minutes mm -hmm. and that sort of piece. Yeah. 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 And I think like I, we've talked about this before, like we used to have more information in the minutes, right? Like what was talked about, who said what, and that type of thing. And then we had a challenge. Um, that there was too much information in the minutes. Yeah, people didn't like what was getting written in the minutes. Correct. Yeah. And so we had a challenge that we were not following the policy, and we swung way back in the other direction, and it just literally says, like, discussion ensued, which makes it really difficult when you're going back through the minutes and yeah. you're trying to find out what happened. And then you have to actually go back to the tape, which is we just talked about, which is fun, <laughs> and then you have to go mm -hmm. through the thing. So I think there's a happy medium between, like, transcribing the entire conversation and noting like relevant points of discussion. So that's one thing, right? And the, our, our policy actually does say appropriate notation of points consideration relevant to the discussion of each agenda item. So I think it does allow for more than just discussion ensued. Um, I do think though, because we do fall under the auspice of Robert's rules, right? Like our meetings yes. by policy, I think are, are led by that. Like their philosophy on minutes is that you should focus on what is done at minutes, not what is said. And yeah. that motion should include motions, points of orders, and appeals. But like, Robert's rules wise, you would not have, like, Miss Lima said this, right. and Mr. K said this, like you, you wouldn't. Yes. Like that's not the intent of the minutes. The intent of the minutes is to record action. And so, it, where do you draw that line, I guess, is the question. Like I totally hear you, but like, the, the meeting order that we follow like is pretty clear on like it shouldn't be much more than that. So I'm yeah. fine with that because that's what we've been doing. Yeah. But then, so I guess, no, I don't love it. Like as yeah. a human, oh, I, I don't love it. But like, but also tell. then we get into that situation where like, okay, what does go in that? Yeah. If it's if it's beyond just reporting actions, then what? Right. Like, where's the line of like what? gets written down and what doesn't get written yeah. down. I, I do think appropriate note appropriate notation of points of consideration relevant to the discussion. I think like uh, that's written in our policy and I do think there are some things that are appropriate that should be noted. Um, but so that goes back to anybody who wishes to request an amendment. Like if we're just writing like discussion ensued, um, the question was what the question that came up was what does a discussion actually entail? Um, like, and so I guess, you know, do, do we want to formalize an amendment process for minutes? We don't actually have one that's noted. Um, and, you know, what is that process? Like, we approve the minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, like, forgetting about, like, citizens for a moment, like, we as school committee members or as administration are approving the minutes, right? And so if we see an issue with the minutes, like what is the process for us to say, like this is wrong or this should be changed or I don't think that's right. In the motion you would, yeah. you would make a motion to amend the minutes. Yeah. So where does that leave a resident if they read it and they don't think it accurately reflects what happens? I guess if we add anybody to remove something from the consent agenda that falls under that. I would, I would. So we're talking about that somebody feels that the minutes don't actually accurately reflect what happened. Yes. And what, 
And what's the what, what's the actual request for you? The have actual for this? request is to create a process for somebody who wishes to request an amendment to the minutes. Like, and, then, and this could be just a citizen, just a, just a mm -hmm. person from the yeah. to request an amendment to yeah. the minutes. I mean, a school committee member has to make the motion, though. Like, like they can't. Like, you, a citizen could write and say, "Hey, I was looking at your minutes and I watched the meeting, and I think that you know, Mr. Case actually seconded that motion, not." Um, you know, Miss Lima, mm -hmm. like that's super helpful, and we want that sort of correspondence. But like, a citizen can't make, like, they they wouldn't be able to amend the minutes. Like, if the minutes are already published, like that would have to come from the school committee member, and they would have to take that feedback from the citizen and make that motion. Right. So like, maybe we could outline like if if you know a citizen does have concerns about accuracy in the minutes like direct those correspondence to the clerk or to the school committee email address so that they know where to send them but like as far as a functional business aspect like only school committee members can make amendments like a motion to amend yeah. those once they're published right which is when the community would yeah. see them so maybe just adding some clarification on if of how because i would want to know but like we can't questions regarding the accuracy the area that you highlighted there where it says appropriate notation of points of consideration relevant to the discussion of each agenda item is that the area that is like the subject of this request like that uh no that was more i noted that for me like to talk about like what we are noting and what we're not um okay. because like in my mind that means that we should be like referencing some things if there is an important point that's relevant to the discussion more than just we voted okay. um, so i added this questions regarding the accuracy of improvement should be directed to the school committee clerk and school committee via email or and or, or like it could go to either or choose the, your choose your your point or the prior to the prior to the meeting prior to it getting approved like like that, so our agenda's post on 48 hours before a meeting, right? Yeah, of proposed minutes. Yeah. Should be directed to the school committee or the school committee via email prior to their approval. What happens after they've been approved? I'd have to look at Robert's rules to see even what the rules are on that. What, what was that question you said? Like, Aaron just what said prior to their mistake, approval, and I'm saying, like, what happens if the, the question arises after we've approved the minutes? You'd have to and put it on as an, a, a separate, separate agenda, agenda item. item. You'd have to put it on again, as a, like an agenda item of, like, um, like, a min, like, like, meeting minutes of da-da-da, like. But that's only if an amendment is actually going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about if minutes are approved mm -hmm. and then someone su submits a request for consideration? Someone submits a request saying that they don't agree with the minutes right. as transcribed. Not a vote, something that's stated in the minutes. Got it. So Once it's voted on, like the committee would have to be willing to make that motion to reopen it right. and change it. Well, the committee would have to place that on the agenda. Yeah, you'd correct? have to put it yeah. like, mm -hmm. like if say somebody emailed after the fact and and they said, "Hey, we realized that there was this mistake. Sorry, I didn't catch it before you approved it." And Doctor Duva and I looked at it and we we're like, "Oh, crud, that was wrong." Mm -hmm. Then my recommendation would be we put it under old un, old business and then have a committee like the committee could make a motion to correct the minutes. I think this was more of a interpretation rather than a right or a wrong. This is why you don't write a lot in your minutes per Robert's rules. Like it's, like it's it's really it supposed to just said, be literally said discussion ensued, and that that was what was in question. But yeah, I mean, unless we want to be write our own meeting minute verbiage beyond what Robert's yeah. rule states, yeah. I'm, I'm just it is what it is. Following through yeah. with this. No, no, no. It's it's valid, but like that we'd have to make a 
So I'm just going to change to say questions regarding the accuracy of minutes should be directed to the school committee clerk or the school committee via email, period. And then if there's any questions, it can be addressed then. I'm happy to like follow up with like the district like attorney about like what else could like what how you like could navigate beyond that okay. like I'm not unopen to it but I do know just from our prior experience yeah. that like it's a slippery slope because then if like there's an opinion difference between committee members yeah. like it's really hard to discern between those yeah. two yeah no I have followed up with him on this one also. yeah um, okay so I'm going to make a motion to forward this to the school committee based on these changes that we discussed. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled for the 28th. Thank you for staying and getting this done. I will make a motion to approve. Um, wait, is there, on our agenda, does it say policies for future meeting? Yes. So one recommendation based on oh, um, yes. yep. the citizen's comment, maybe we could do, because I know why we put a lot on, because yeah. sometimes we get to it and we're like, oh, we don't really have a lot to discuss, and then if it's not on, we can't talk about yep. it. But I wonder if we could designate, like, one or two that like will absolutely be talked about yep, like at this yep. meeting these two will absolutely be talked about and then the other ones could be on as like maybe. and maybes yep. but like try to help prioritize it for yep. the citizens so that they know like oh if i want to talk about that one i definitely yep. need to come to this meeting um because i totally agree with that feedback but i also know why we carry the long list because yep. they don't all and get wrapped up in one meeting yeah yeah yep. so maybe we can, can just try that, that. yeah okay i wish to adjourn Second. All in favor?